Okay, right, these are some techniques I've learned about digitally coloring my um, handmade artwork and it's stuff I've learned from other tutorials and other artists. So what I really like to do is hand draw my artwork in black and white and then color it on the computer. It just creates the look that I like. So I'm going to take away some of those colors so you can see what I've started with. So I'll just hide these color layers. So I start with an outline layer um, and this I trace on a, I'll do a sketch in pencil on any piece of paper and then use a light box and um, use, you know, thick Bristol or watercolor paper and a thin brush and ink and just outline it in ink. And then I do an ink wash layer with, so I'll put that ink line outline layer on the light box and then put a piece of watercolor paper over and just build up washes of ink with ink and brush. Um, and I just find that looks the best because then the ink kind of covers up any of the, you know, borders you have in between your objects. So then I add a color just by painting and I'll show you what that looks like. So I'm going to show you the rug. I'll make a new layer here, put that underneath the rug layer, and call it rug two. And I'm in my paintbrush tool, and I'll use this green color I have selected. And make sure the paintbrush is 100% hardness. I use an oval brush a lot. I just find it works well for me. And another really important thing is to make sure the opacity is set to 100. So you're literally just, oops, make the brush bigger. Literally just painting with the brush and you can make it really big to fill in big areas and make it small to zoom in and get these smaller areas. And you can make it really small. And then if you go over the lines, um, you can just use your eraser tool. Again, make sure that's at 100% hardness and erase it out. So this opacity has to be set at 100% too. So you can just take out what you've done if you've gone too far. So I just go back and forth between the paintbrush tool and the eraser and it takes some time, so you can, um, you know, be listening to something else. It just takes a lot of time. Um, it's not difficult at all. You just have to be ready to spend the time to do it. Then what I do is instead of having the opacity of the paintbrush um, lower, because I don't want it to be that dark, but if the opacity of the paintbrush is low, you start to get overlaps like that, and that just doesn't look good. Um, so instead of having the opacity of the paintbrush low, I change the opacity of the actual layer here in the layers panel. And I've been making them 40% for this. So now the ink wash is showing through, um, and the color is just kind of like tinting it. Oops, let's put this back up to 100%. And you can, of course, paint with the layer opacity lowered so you can really see what you're doing um, and what it's, the final is going to look like. Um, so it's really important to have each color in a different layer and that's because of the opacity. The opacity on each might be a little bit different but it's also because you can change the color of each layer. So go to image adjustments, image adjustments, color balance and you can make it red, you know, and you can use the shadows. And, well, actually for this, there is no shadows and midtones, but you can change the color this way. You can change the levels um, and you really have a lot of control when you have each, each color in a separate layer. So just make lots of layers and name them so they're not confusing. Okay. And for the um, outlines and the ink wash, I have them set to multiply here. And that takes away that white. So if you see the normal, normal looks like that. 
multiply because the white of the paper is showing through and multiply is just showing the outlines and I have the ink wash also set to multiply Let's see what it looks like it's not a multiply um, and then I have all the colors just set to normal and I just changed the opacity now sometimes multiply doesn't work so I found another um, way to isolate the line layer. This I learned from Tegan White's Tumblr. She's a really amazing illustrator and I'll put a link to her blog um, on, in the um, description. So this is a way to isolate the line layer where you don't have to use multiply when you're coloring in, when you're digitally coloring your art. So this is a, just a scan of a um, of a micron pen drawing. So the first thing I'm going to do is go up to image adjustment levels and I'm going to get it totally black and white. There's a lot of texture here from the watercolor paper so I definitely want to get rid of that. Um, oops, pull that in. You can see you can just play around with this and get it looking the way you want and press OK. And now I'm going to duplicate the layer. So I'm right clicking hitting duplicate layer, keep it called background copy. And now I'm going into my channels panel here. If you don't have channels open, you can go to window and just check channels. It's black and white um, because I scanned it in as black and white. So I'm then going to select this little dotted line square. It's called load channel as selection. And then I'm going to hit the delete button and then I'm going to deselect. And now if we come back into the layers, I'm going to turn off the background. You can see that it's transparent and we just have the line work left. I'm going to fill this in with black to fill in some of that lighter line work. So I'm just going to go make sure you're on the new layer that you've made, the background copy. I'm going to go to edit, fill, Make sure this is set to black and the opacity is 100%. Press OK. Now what you can do is you can color, you can make a, a white layer and then another layer in between to color. So I'm going to make a new layer here, drag it underneath the background copy, and I'm going to make my color palette black and white by clicking this little black and white icon and switching them with the arrow here. And I'm just going to go to my paint bucket and fill. So we have, sorry, Command Z, switch these so white is on top, paint bucket fill. So now we have a white background. I'm going to make another layer, and this is what I'm going to color on. So I want to use brown for the trunk. And now you can see I'm in grayscale because I scanned this in as black and white, so I'm not going to be able to get that brown color if we go into the paintbrush tool. It's just gray. Um, so I'm going to come up to image, image mode. I'm going to make it CMYK because I'll make a print and CMYK is for print where RGB would be for um, web design. So CMYK, I'm going to press don't merge. Okay. And now you can see the brown is showing up as brown. And now you're doing the same thing. Sorry and you're just coloring in the brown layer. And same thing as before, you know, really taking your time. I'm gonna call this layer brown. I'm gonna make another layer, call it green, or you could call it leaves or whatever. Sorry, it doesn't actually pick up the green. And then, you know, making your brush smaller and larger, zooming in, and really getting everything colored in the way you want it to look. Um, so what you can also do, and you can delete some of this stuff or just erase it out. Um, and so you have to go into the background copy to do that. Um, okay, so what you can also do is change the color of the outlines that you've made. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to grab this gradient, this blue gradient that I have called Moon Gradient. I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to duplicate layer and I'm going to change the destination. So I'm going to move it into 
the big tree lines that I have open that we were just working in and press OK. And now that layer is over here. I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to make a clipping mask. So to make sure this, this colored layer is above your line layer. So this is my line layer and then the colored layer is above it. I'm just going to hold the Option Alt key and move my mouse so it's right in between the two layers so see how it changes and I'm just going to click. Now that color layer has changed the color of the line work by creating that clipping mask. So you can really make it any color you want. You can change the opacity so it's just a tint of a color. You can really do put any kind of texture or a layer, color layer in here that you want. Um, so that's it. I hope you have fun making some cool digital artwork and thanks for watching.